Hey everybody, it's Joe here, and this is devlog number three for Full Court Heroes, my 2D basketball game in development. I haven't really had a lot of time for video production lately, but I do want to put a video out because it has been so long since I've released a video on this channel, and I want everyone to know that Full Court Heroes is alive and well. In fact, I'm now in what I'd call a final push toward releasing a public demo on Steam. In this video, I want to share with you guys progress that I've made uh, on online networking, music and UI changes, some new offensive controls, set plays with a built-in play designer, and finally, what's left to be done before I can release the public demo. So what have I been up to? I've had some things going on the last couple of months that have pulled me away from game dev quite a bit, but that doesn't mean that development work on Full Court Heroes stopped. It does mean that when I had the time to do it, I was working on the game rather than producing videos for YouTube, so I'm sorry it's been so long since I released a devlog. That and a lot of the changes I've been working on aren't really visual in nature and are a bit harder to really show. So let's talk about some of those changes that have happened in the last couple of months. Online networking. I decided to go ahead and get online network multiplayer working. I had done some experimenting with netcode before and was pretty sure I could make it work, but it was still one of the biggest question marks for me. It is also something that very, very few indie sports games support, so Full Court Heroes had reached a certain point where I wanted to get online multiplayer up and running or find out early if I needed to stop promising that feature if I wasn't going to be able to make it work. I started doing some research into what a good approach would be, and I decided that rollback netcode was worth looking into since my game was completely deterministic for given inputs. While it's typically used for fighting games, the way my game is organized, I thought it would be a good way to get good lag compensation while ensuring fairness. I started experimenting with it and it looked like it worked really well. I also decided I liked the features of the Nakama game server. While the Steam API can do most of what I'll use in Nakama, Nakama integrates well with Steam and Nakama will allow me greater flexibility. The main advantage of that being that if I ever release Full Court Heroes on a platform that isn't Steam, consoles or mobile for example, I will not have to completely rewrite my netcode. Fortunately, I found some really great tutorials and libraries for both Nakama and Rollback Netcode from Dave at Snowpeck Games. I highly recommend these libraries and tutorials. It allowed me to pretty quickly get some netcode up and running. You can check out these libraries yourself if you want by following the link in the description. So I got things basically working and then I found out that my game really wasn't as deterministic as I thought. I started running into frequent situations where the two clients would get irreparably out of sync. For one, Godot's physics uses floating point math, and so it's not perfectly deterministic. Plus, I had more code than I realized that wasn't really conducive to syncing over the network. So I began the process of rewriting basically all of my gameplay code to be compatible with networking. It was a huge undertaking that took basically an entire seven weeks. It was a tough thing to try to do because I felt like development had basically paused while I was just rewriting stuff that I had already had working. But in the long run, I really think it was a smart move to do it early rather than wait. If I had waited and, and just pushed ahead with new gameplay features, I would have just been creating more and more code that would later have to be rewritten. After taking the time to get it all fixed for networking, any new features I add or any new code I've written since has been written with network compatibility in mind from the start. Snowpack Games Rollback Netcode library for Godot also lets you simulate lag and debug the code. It, it's really awesome and it helped me with figuring out all of the places where things were going wrong. I simulated high lag and made sure the game would still work. Naturally, playability degrades as, as lag gets out of hand, but the game will not break unless lag is so bad it overflows some memory set aside to store frames that haven't been resolved on both clients yet. I've played the game on multiple computers with pings of about 200 milliseconds, and it plays pretty well at that. Online network play will not be part of my first public demo, more than likely, because I still don't have a Nakama server set up and running on the internet. I've only been testing with a server running on one of my local machines so far. I am most likely going to wait until closer to releasing the game to really get the multiplayer server online, since there are monthly costs associated with that. Of course, online network play isn't the only option for playing with friends. There's definitely local multiplayer and Steam Remote Play too. So that was how the bulk of my development time lately has been spent, but I made plenty of other progress too. I've completed more on the user interface and hired a composer, Zoe at Poipol Project. I just have the main menu track from her at the moment, which you can hear right now. I'm looking forward to getting a track for use during the gameplay very soon. But as for UI changes, you can now fully set up an exhibition game. You can see that here on the menu screen as you select the teams for exhibition game, there's also an option to select arcade 
or simulation mode. The main differences between arcade and simulation is that simulation allows more complicated controls for dribble moves and affecting your shot. Also, simulation mode has different rules that are enabled by default. Uh, other options include you can change the period length and number of periods. So if you wanted it to feel more like college ball, you can set it to two halves instead of four quarters. Difficulty settings affect the player in that shooting becomes more difficult or easy, as well as some of the finer controls in simulation mode. Otherwise, difficulty affects the awareness, responsiveness, and decision making of the AI opponent if you're playing against the computer. I was able to implement various types of passing. There's the button pass, where you can use the buttons on the controller to select who you're passing to. This is the one I already had implemented and working with. New features include what I'll call the directional regular pass, bounce pass, and lob pass. You can use the appropriate button for each of those passes and then use the left stick to point in the direction of the player you want to pass to. And you can see there's a pass target icon that indicates which teammate that pass will actually go to. Also, with the lob pass comes the ability to alley you, which is a lot of fun, I think. From there, I started spending a lot of time working on the CPU player, mostly on the offensive side of things. I created an engine that would read a JSON data file that describes a play and executes the play during a game. It works by just describing steps each play takes at certain times or in order after a previous step finishes. Once that was working, I wanted to design some plays to give offensive options to the CPU player, so I decided to build a play designer for myself with the idea of including it in the game so the players could design their own plays. I'm not sure it's designed the best way yet and it still needs a lot of polish, but I got it working. You can define what the starting position of the play is. The play won't actually start executing until every player reaches close enough to their start position, and then each player begins executing whatever moves are defined until the play is ended which will usually happen when a shot is thrown up, or uh, if not a shot, the play uh, can reset and, and start another play. Available moves are to move to a spot and stop there. A waypoint moves to a place on the court but doesn't stop, it just keeps running through to the next place. Uh, you can tell a player to move to a spot and set a screen, or a player can move to a spot and receive a pass from the previous ball handler. Or you can tell a player to take a shot. There'll be other options added, of course, and I still have a lot more plans for the set play engine. Some really important pieces like conditional logic, like checking if a pass or shot is open first and then branching off it into something else if not. The other plans I have for the play designer is to define parameters for when they should be called. For instance, this play should be called when you're playing with a, a forward at the four who's a good outside shooter. Or this play would work well when your post player has a size advantage over his defender. So I want to define those parameters to, to help the CPU player make intelligent choices when it comes to calling plays. One of the things that I implemented to make it easier for me to test the set play engine is CPU versus CPU. And that's definitely going to remain in the game. I think there's some players who really prefer to manage their team and, and players and then just watch the game. A lot of the footage you've been seeing in this video is actually from the CPU versus CPU mode. Finally, I want to talk about what is still needing to be done before I can release a public demo. Variety in player appearance, hairstyles, etc. so that I can really build some rosters with players you can distinguish from one another while playing. This will probably include adding the in-game player editor because that's going to be the best way for me to quickly build the players I need to populate my team rosters. I want to add officials to the game, doing officially things like handing the ball to the inbounder in a side-out situation, or uh, visually uh, calling whether a shot is a two-pointer or a three-pointer, or doing the opening tip. Which brings me right to the next item. I still need to implement the tip-off. Right now the game just begins with the away team having the ball at midcourt. I don't want to release a demo like that, I want to have a proper tip-off. I also need to handle what happens when the game is over. Uh, right now it just kind of stops and doesn't really end the game, it just sits there. I need to create some animations for layups. I want to include UI for you to view team rosters and stats and to set the starting lineups. And I have a few more control things to implement, especially on the defensive side. Then some other things fall into the category of things I'd really like to get added before I release a demo, but they're not crucial if, if it would hold things up too long. Uh, I would love to have a variety in the crowd that, that makes the crowd move and really come alive. Uh, a scores table and, and team benches. The ability to make substitutions during the game. Those things aren't really necessary for you to get a feel for the gameplay, but I would still hope to put them in just because I think they might go a long way to helping the overall impression that the demo makes and, and how the demo and quality of the game are perceived. 
I will definitely do everything I can to make sure that I am clear that this is an early demo and not at all complete. But the truth is that some people may play the demo and if it looks like the quality isn't there, they may never give the game another shot. So while I'm anxious to get the demo out to all of you, I'm at the same time wanting to make sure it reflects a high quality standard, at least for the features that are included in the demo. Anyway, as you can see, there are still a lot of things to get done before the demo is released, but the list is getting shorter and shorter all the time. If you think of anything absolutely essential that I missed for the demo, please let me know in the comments. I'll try to do a better job of keeping you informed as to my progress on that as well. That's everything I can think of for now. I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video. Your feedback has been so encouraging and overwhelmingly positive. I'm definitely making my dream basketball game. and. It is really great to see that other people are interested in this too. If you haven't already, please consider liking the video, subscribing to this channel, and if you haven't yet, you can wishlist for Court Heroes on Steam. A link is in the description for that. One other way that you can really help out is if you know other people that you think would like a game like Full Court Heroes, please tell them about this. Let them know. I want this to be able to reach as many people that would enjoy it as possible. Thank you again. Hope to catch you in the next video. Have a great day.